China threatens the Biden administration with four policy red lines. Plus, China's dangerous monkey business. That and more on this week's China News Headline. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party has drawn some uh, red lines for the Biden administration. Before we begin, YouTube is demonetizing us and secretly unsubscribing people from this channel. You can help us stand up to the censorship and ensure you get notified of new episodes by supporting us on patreon.com slash China Uncensored for as little as a dollar an episode. So as I said, China has drawn some red lines for the U.S. Four red lines, to be exact. These are demands the Communist Party is making of the Biden administration. As my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, calls them, the red lines that can't be crossed. Those red lines were drawn by Chinese Foreign Affairs Minister Wang Yi at a video conference earlier this week. And it's kind of confusing, because they're not really red lines that can't be crossed. There are actually four things that the Chinese Communist Party demands the U.S. government do. The U.S. must end support for Taiwan, Hong Kong, Xinjiang, and Tibet. Resume the U.S.-China dialogue on all levels. End the tariffs on Chinese products and sanctions on Chinese enterprises. And remove all restrictions on China's state-run media and cultural entities, such as the Confucius Institutes. First, I feel like this is cheating. That is way more than four things. Second, this sounds like when kids write a Christmas list for Santa and they put four ponies on the list. They know they're not going to get four ponies, but maybe they could get one pony, or at least a My Little Pony. So will Biden make Xi Jinping a brony? We don't know yet. The reason that the Chinese regime can come out and make these red line demands now is that Biden has only been in office for a month, and he hasn't clarified where he stands on a lot of these issues. And it's not just China that wants to know. For instance, the Uyghur rights group, the East Turkestan Government in Exile, has called on Biden to clarify his stance on the genocide of Uyghur Muslims. That was in response to these comments Biden made on a CNN town hall. I point out, Tim, no American president can be sustained as a president if he doesn't reflect the values of the United States. And so the idea, I'm not going to speak out against what he's doing in Hong Kong, what he's doing with the Uyghurs in western mountains of, of uh, China and Taiwan trying to end the one China policy by making it forceful. I, I said, and by the way, he said he, he gets it. Culturally, there are different norms at each country, and they, their leaders are expected to follow. Those comments caused a lot of controversy. Conservative media had a field day. For more on that, check out this episode of America Uncovered. And former President Trump is also calling into question Biden's resolve on China. Here he is in an interview with Newsmax, responding to a question about the Biden town hall. Well, his family is involved with the Chinese, certainly, in a long time, and a lot of money. The whole thing is so ridiculous. We had China exactly where we wanted them. Biden has not clarified his China policy yet. But is it as bad as some people make it seem? More on that after the break. Welcome back. So some people are concerned about Biden's China policy. However, Biden might just keep Trump's China tariffs in place. And Biden's Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has been critical of the Chinese regime. He's called out the genocide of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. And in a recent interview, he also said China needs to come clean on the coronavirus pandemic. He said it requires countries to be transparent. It requires them to share information. It requires them to give access to international experts at the beginning of an outbreak. Things that, unfortunately, we haven't seen from China. And State Department spokesman Ned Price expressed concern about a new Chinese law that explicitly allows its Coast Guard to fire on foreign vessels. Price said, we are further concerned that China may invoke this new law to assert its unlawful maritime claims in the South China Sea. 
So at least as far as talking points go, the Biden administration doesn't seem to care too much about China's four red lines. But it's unclear what kind of actions they plan to take. But the good news is that right now, standing up to the Chinese Communist Party has bipartisan support. This week, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said he wants a bill to counter China. Specifically, he told lawmakers to start drafting a legislative package to outcompete China and create new American jobs. That sounds nice and all, Mr. Schumer. But with the tough on China stance, have you ever thought about all the wealthy Americans who might lose their investments in China? Meanwhile, it turns out China gave U.S. diplomats anal COVID tests in error. In error. A butt dial is an error. A butt swab isn't something that just happens. Oh, sorry, I was going for your nose, but then I slipped. The U.S. State Department has now assured everyone that it is committed to preserving the dignity of American diplomats and their families, consistent with the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. And I'll be back with more probing news after this final commercial break. Welcome back. According to an Israeli cyber firm, a Chinese hacking tool was modeled on NSA spyware. It says that the Chinese tool was a copy of a tool used by an NSA group called the Equation Group. So China essentially pirated a hacking tool from the NSA. The Tel Aviv-based firm hypothesized that Chinese spies may have obtained the code during an Equation Group operation against a target in China, captured it while monitoring an Equation Group attack on a third party, or acquired it during a Chinese operation against the Equation Group. So basically, everyone in this story is terrible. And speaking of everyone is terrible, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is rejecting a boycott of the Beijing Olympics, despite all the genocide. According to the BBC, Mr. Johnson said the UK was leading international action in the UN to hold China to account. International action in the UN. So Boris Johnson is planning to accomplish nothing. Sure, his government is demanding China give the United Nations urgent and unfettered access to Xinjiang to investigate. But China is treating that about as seriously as Johnson is treating the Olympic boycott. While we're on the topic of getting the UN to investigate stuff, let's talk about the World Health Organization. Everyone's favorite international health organization just got a bit scummier. The Guardian recently obtained an internal World Health Organization document that admitted China did little to hunt for the origins of the coronavirus. That's the kind of information that would have saved lives. And yet, the WHO spent months praising the Communist Party publicly. If I had COVID-19, I'd want to be treated in, in China. I'm so glad Biden announced he wants to keep the U.S. as the WHO's biggest funder. Now this will shock you, but the Chinese Communist Party has betrayed the Vatican. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal is probably something that the Pope would never say. You see, the Vatican and the Chinese Communist Party have argued for years over who has the right to appoint Catholic bishops in China. The Vatican thinks it's the job for the Catholic Church. The Chinese Communist Party thinks it's a job for the atheist Chinese Communist Party. Makes sense. But after careful negotiation, the Pope agreed to a deal with the Chinese regime. What was the deal? Well, the details were never made public. But I'm guessing the Chinese regime has broken whatever agreement they had. According to new rules that will take effect on May 1st, China's state-run Catholic Church and Bishops Conference will select, approve, and ordain Episcopal candidates with no mention of the Vatican's involvement in the process. You'd think the Pope, as the head of the Catholic Church, would know that deals with the devil usually work out in the devil's favor. But I guess the Holy See didn't see it coming. Last week, the Chinese Communist Party admitted 
that at least four Chinese soldiers died during a border clash with India last year. And this week, China detained six people for insulting those soldiers. And by insulting, they mean they did things like questioning China's official death toll. And they're getting up to 15 days in jail for it. But they're getting off easy. Because back in 2018, China passed a law that bans people from insulting or slandering heroes and martyrs. At the time, it was a civil law. But next month, it will become a criminal law. And the penalty goes up to three years in jail. So don't try to sell Chairman Miao merchandise in China. The penalty could be catastrophic. A great U.S. weakness has been revealed by the coronavirus pandemic. We were unprepared for it. Not only did the Chinese Communist Party hide the severity of the coronavirus in order to hoard medical supplies, but they also ensured a shortage of test subjects for coronavirus research. And by test subjects, I mean monkeys. Yes, China banned the export of monkeys and other wildlife just when the world needed it most. You see, as the New York Times says, the world needs monkeys, whose DNA closely resembles that of humans, to develop COVID-19 vaccines. But a global shortage, resulting from the unexpected demand caused by the pandemic, has been exacerbated by a recent ban on the sale of wildlife from China, the leading supplier of the lab animals. Wait, China is the world's leading supplier of lab animals? Not only do they dominate the medical equipment market, they also dominate the monkey market. This ain't no monkey business. Okay, it technically is. But the U.S. is taking it seriously. The latest shortage has revived talk about creating a strategic monkey reserve. So this is how it starts. But this is actually very similar to how the U.S. has an emergency stockpile of oil and grain. In other words, President Biden, build that strategic monkey reserve. Strategic monkey reserve will also be the name of my new rock band. And now it's time for me to answer questions from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Bill Hanna asks, Hi Chris, love your show. Thanks. China was the first recipient of a Tesla Gigafactory outside of the U.S and competes directly with local electric vehicle manufacturers. Xpeng is one such competitor that has a lawsuit pending about IP theft. What is the uncensored view of the CCP's real long-term view of this relationship? Yes, Elon Musk seems to have a rather rosy view of China. And guess how that's working out for him? That was from earlier this month. And this is pretty typical of what happens to big foreign companies when they go to China. The Communist Party opens the door, welcomes them in, and then steals their intellectual property, makes a Chinese knockoff, and then uses regulation to crush the foreign company. Now, I don't know if that's what happened with the Tesla factory, but I wouldn't be surprised if Elon Musk someday finds himself cursing China's sudden but inevitable betrayal. Thanks for your question, Bill. And thank you for watching. Support China Uncensored. Join the 50 Cent Army and get access to lots of cool perks, like asking me questions on the show by signing up at patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.